feel free to submit questions into the chat. Uh, we will have you know some time towards the end of the meeting to cover direct Q&A questions. And we'll have a few polls that we'll be pushing out uh, to you guys if you guys wish to answer some brief questions, uh, kind of getting some specific use cases that you guys are looking for in, within your environments. Just as an agenda today, we're going to be talking about the data classification, the benefits that come with data classification, what makes the Netrix data classification suite uh, unique, and we'll then jump into the demonstration and then kind of go into some of the uh, deeper um, functionality features that are now available in 5.6, and then we'll kind of get into a little bit about Netrix and the Q&A towards the end. So some of the benefits of data classification, identifying sensitive information that is residing out in your environment, being able to respond or solve legal requests such as DSAR searches that might be happening in your environment, as well as the ability to redu reduce that attack surface that is coming into your environment. You know, any and all sensitive information, we can do some quarantining, securing of that data. So making sure that that sensitive information of all information that might be in your environment is secured down and, uh, you know, not sitting out on a public share easily accessible. What makes the data classification unique, we do have a compound term index indexing, which I always like to correlate to a term like triple heart bypass. Say you're looking to classify, you know, a sort of surgical or medical term there, triple heart bypass. If you just have basic keyword search indicators, you might get, you know, words for triple might be a, uh, you know, baseball term. Bypass might bring up some freeway information. Heart might get some Valentine's Day cards, but having that correlated information flowing back into those terms, again, kind of gives you some additional value. The reusable index, also a great value point, thanks to the persistent index that we create when we scan and classify this data, that index makes all of our data easily searchable. So if you ever have to search for an additional term or an additional value, regex, uh, metadata tag, anything that you're searching for, thanks to that index, you know, you don't have to do a full, you know, hundreds of terabytes classification or scan again, that index allows us to easily run those queries against the database and bring out results. Also have a granular taxonomy manager, a lot of taxonomies out of the box, depending on the regulation that you are looking to solve. We have things for PCI, for credit card compliance, GLBA for banking regulations. We have GDPR compliance as well for European compliance. So no matter the specific classification you're looking for, we're very flexible out of the box, as well as the ability to create your own sensitive data taxonomies as well as some transparent rule results, see why specific files were classified, what was the actual hit indicator going against that, and we also do some additional highlighting of those terms within your data to make it easy to point out and show, oh, here is a credit card number written within plain text. Now, a little bit about Netrix. We were founded in 2006. We're headquartered in Irvine, California. We have a global customer base of over 10,000 plus, and we've been uh, for the past eight years running among the fastest U.S. growing software companies. And here, as you can see, we have uh, some additional verticals and some companies that are currently utilizing our technology across all of these different uh, verticals here. Now, this is the Netrix data classification or Netrix uh, data so security solution stack here. We're going to be focusing on this lower portion of the bracket here, looking at what technologies and services we can scan for sensitive data, such as Google Drive, standard file servers, Office 365, uh, Dropbox, Box. So a lot of different various sources we can go out and look for sensitive data. Now let's jump right into uh, the demonstration here. And we'll take a look at the actual data classification software here. So one of the initial values you get is just this high level dashboard, seeing the various terms and classification taxonomies that you have utilized, the specific sources that you've actually cl classified here. Here we have a basic file server source, as well as the various taxonomies that we've been hitting against. So here we have the California Consumer Privacy Act, GLBA, PCI, GDPR, as I kind of just mentioned here, as well as the top terms that we've actually classified here. So here we have some Visa card numbers, some union pay IDs. We can also look for you know banking information or sensitive files by age, depending on what's contained within that metadata to do some uh, 
some additional cleanup processes that you're looking for. Now, if we pop open the sources here, we can start to take a look at the various sources again that uh, we support. And if we go into sources here or hit add, again, we can pop out some of those additional sources, just in another view in terms of some of the systems that we can look for sensitive data. Structured databases such as SQL, Oracle, or MySQL are also another differentiator between us and some of our competitors. And then once we go out and actually start crawling and classifying this data, we can start looking through it through the taxonomies tab. So again, looking for those various pieces of information that we're looking for, we can look at something like GLBA, looking for US social security numbers that might be contained within our environment. And if we go to browse, we can start seeing those various terms that are out here. So here, as we can see, written within plain text, we do have a US social security number here as well, US social security number written out within plain text. Okay. And we do also have the ability to do optical character recognition. So if you're looking through different image types as well for sensitive data, you can classify those results as well. Say we're looking for some visa account card numbers as well. Again, written within plain text, we have this visa account card number. So going out, discovering this data, whether it's contained within a CSV, a PDF, a zip file, within a database, we're going to go out and look for this sensitive information. Now we can look at another taxonomy, say PHI for personal health information. And what we're looking for here is disease names, medical treatment forms, any sort of uh, regulation that might be contained within these clues here. And we do have uh, multiple language recognition, Chinese character recognition. So pretty much every language out of the box in terms of what you're looking for. So be it you're looking for, you know, uh, any sort of medical information for HIPAA, maybe you're looking for credit card, GDPR, or for example, some of our CMMC classifications, which has been a new requirement with the DOD. So if you are in that DOD supply chain, you need to be able to go out and classify your CUI data. So here we have some distribution statements, various tags and export labels that the DOD is telling uh, you know, CMMC or those subcontractors to be adherent to. So any specific compound term, regulated term that you're looking for, very easy to go out, discover the sensitive data, as well as start applying some additional workflows. Now, once we have that data classified, we can also start to sign those workflows. So with the workflows, we can do automatic migrations of documents. We can do email alerting. We can also do permissions updating. So between those two, you know, you can update or alert on a uh, file that gets uploaded to the standard file share. You could say, oh, hey, you know, maybe this specific regulated document has a uh, migration that are going to have to be taken place here. Maybe we want to do a permissions updating Bye -bye. on a public share. You can also do something called Bye -bye. metadata tagging and metadata writing, which can enhance something like an Office 365 or another DLP-like solution to actually take action based on those metadata labels. So if we launch the little wizard here, we can select, oh, I wish to take action on a file server or a file. We can select what specific source we wish to take action on. We can say, you know, a specific source, multiple sources, or just, you know, this local file share source that I have here. We can then do those uh, email alerting or okay. permissions updating. And then we can also do something called redaction. So if, if you wish to actually redact sensitive information from within your environment, you can set up a redaction plan to actually throw a big, what I like to call the CIA-like redacted text over your originating text, maybe block out uh, you know, banking information, credit card details, uh, x-ray, uh, you know, personal identifiable information from within. You can also do a data mask. Now with the data mask, you can mask pieces of sensitive information from within that document. Say you wish to redact the first five digits of a social security number. So we would retain zero characters on the first few, but we wish to retain those last four digits. So with that retention there, we're gonna be able to see those last four digits for identification purposes. And we could also create a copy of the originating document and migrate that originating document to another share.
Now, if we go into analysis, we can also start seeing some additional reporting that we have available. So with the reporting, we can start seeing some reporting templates, start uh, you know generating some predefined reports based on specific data access trends. Also, if we see the classification overview, we can go into the sensitive document reports, and this can be another way of digging through your actual results, seeing what specific document was classified, what taxonomy or what piece of sensitive information it had contained within the source, as well as letting you kind of jump into here, see the originating extracted text that we actually classified and discovered. So here we got this union pay information. We can see the actual metadata of that document. And as I mentioned earlier, you can write to the metadata and actually specify specific pieces of sensitive information contained within. You can see the classifications, again, correlating that uh, this is within different taxonomies, but that is a union pay number that we have detected. And then we have, again, the various hit counts and some of the properties of that document itself. So it gives you some uh, correlation between what was classified and why. So you can start building on or creating your own additional taxonomies here. Looks like we might have a question in the board here. Let me go ahead and open that up here. Uh, this will be uh, recorded, uh, Daryl, there. Yeah, so all this uh, this recording will be sent out uh, after the meeting, so uh, totally no problem there. So if we go into the clue building report, we can start seeing auto classification reviews, clue misses, start generating specific reports based on specific data access trends here, document classifications, a lot of system level reports seeing what was specifically discovered and classified. And then going to stats, it's always nice to see you know, how many documents have been processed an hour, the content distribution, the number of files that are possibly skipped, or the text extraction errors. Very easy to track and see, you know, what specifically was classified and uh, what was uh, possibly, you know, amiss within your environment. Now, based on the data classification reports that you receive, as well as the classification results you receive in this environment as well, we can also start doing additional searches on our data. So thanks to that persistent index, we can do additional searches on whatever piece of data we have discovered with our environment. So say we're looking for some 1099 information, makes it very easy to search within the context of your entire file structure, email structure, databases, depending on what you're looking for. So just having the ability to query or search for any term word that's in your environment, as uh, most Windows admins would know, the Windows search probably fails us about 90% of the time. So having an ad internal Google-like search for searching, again, the content inside those documents can be very useful. Let's start also adding additional custom filters, those metadata tags and writings that I was mentioning earlier. So it gives you some additional context. And also you have the ability to run DSAR searches. So with DSAR, this is called data subject access request. This is a new requirement in the California Consumer Privacy Act, as well as in Europe with GDPR. What this allows you to do is run these DSAR searches against uh, users or customers that you might have in your environment that they are wishing to be what's called the right to be forgotten or also the right to know what a company is doing with your personal identifiable information. So for example, you know, since Facebook is a uh, company based in California, you could go to Facebook and go, hey, you know, my name's Joe. Uh, I want to go out and look for sensitive information that you have on me, and I wish you to purge that information. So any and all contact information that you might have um, contained within a various company systems, they need to be able to abide by that within a specific time frame here. So you could search for specific names, email addresses, any other specific piece of reference information, maybe a date of birth, maybe a contact form that might be contained within that user's information. And then the case ID here is for your own internal documentation that you're keeping in terms of how you're operating these DSAR searches here. Now, based on the data classification results that you get, you also start to get correlated information back to our Netrix auditor system. So within the Netrix auditor, what we can do is pay attention to user activity that is occurring in the environment. Just as a kind of brief summary, we like to map out things to the who is doing what, when, and where. So once we have the data classification results, we can pay attention to that activity that's occurring 
on these data classification uh, servers um, going here. So here we have an administrator doing a read access attempt against this uh, you know, Excel uh, file here. We can see the originating time that he had this change, the specific location where this change came from, as well as the category of sensitive information that was contained within that document. We also give you the process in terms of what specific application was actually utilized for executing this change. Now, this change was just done, uh, you know, in a simple Windows Explorer view. But say you're utilizing an ERP or EHR system for inputting data into a database or inputting data, you know, just on a file server. You can have that specific process ID, such as QuickBooks uh, or uh, other various EHR, ERP systems that are possibly inputting sensitive information into your environment as well. You can also start paying attention to the direct permissions on sensitive files and folders. So what are the specific permissions? Hey Nick, sorry to interrupt, but we can't hear you. Apologies, looks like uh, my audio cut out there for a second. So yeah, this is the data classification. Sorry if uh, my audio cut out there for a second there. Um, looking at specific risk trends that are occurring in your environment here. So paying attention to that high level risk factor that is occurring over time. Now we can also see a risk breakdown, see what trending pieces of data are growing over time, see the infrastructure level risk, data risk, as well as specific actions that might be required in your environment, like these are out of the baseline that you're looking to solve. And then you can see the originating reports of where this piece of data is coming from, servers with unauthorized antivirus, inactive user accounts, administrative group membership sprawl, a lot of these actions that you wish to take. And you can see from what originating lab that specific data point is actually coming from. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, Julia, if we could throw a uh, poll into the oh, chat, honey. that would uh, be great here. But yeah, if anybody has any additional questions, that's pretty much a brief coverage of the Netrix data classification, as well as some of our new things that have been coming out recently. Um, if you're looking for, you know, doing an additional test, um, you know, the 20 day trial is available on our website. And, uh, you know, our engineers here, uh, such as myself, are freely willing to, you know, help that help uh, get that installed for you guys. So if uh, any questions, uh, if you guys want to throw that in the chat. Thank you. Looks like we got some uh, answers here to the poll. Looks like almost 100% of you are uh, looking to reduce the exposure of sensitive data. We have some, you know, almost about half there, achieving compliance. 
Um, obviously, that sensitive data is going to align with compliance, as well as the cleaning up of unneeded data. So one of the features I kind of skipped over here for the cleaning up of unused data, if we go into the reports, we do also have this thing called deduplication. So if you're looking for duplicate documents that might be out in your environment, looking for that specific information that you know is what we call rot data, redundant, obsolete, or trivial data that's no longer needed in your environment, we can do deduplicate detection, looking for documents that are you know copies of each other, as well as some high-level document reports, near duplicate detection, see you know maybe how your environment has been changing over time in terms of looking for this information. And again, just like always, uh, giving you the ability to do some text extraction, seeing if this is actually a uh, needed piece of information that's going to be taking up storage, or especially once those retention periods fall for something like HIPAA or uh, for PCI, you know, those seven-year retention periods might want to be purging this data after a specific time. And actually with the purging of data, you could assign a workflow, for example, to you know, migrate documents of a specific age, and then, you know, just a simple delete or purge, you know, through the workflow. Got another question here from Joe. SharePoint Exchange, is it possible to do Teams? Uh, Yes, that is true. As you said, uh, piggybacking on SharePoint. Yes, so within the auditor as well as within the data classification, we do have the ability to classify teams as well as OneDrive. Um, as uh, Joe mentioned there, you know, pretty much architecturally, it's the same on the back end. Um, so a team's classification is pretty much pointing towards uh, the team site. So once you do the classification towards that team site, um, pretty much uh, able to uh, classify that same thing with OneDrive. If you had a individual OneDrive team site, able to go out and classify the, that piece of data. Any, <clears throat> any other uh, questions in the chat here? Awesome. Well, thank you for your poll results. Um, if anybody has any, any additional questions, feel free to reach out uh, to myself or any of our Netrix representatives that you uh, might see within uh, the chat. Oh, yeah, Rebecca. Yeah, it's, apologies about my uh, mic cutting out there. Let's go through Risk Insights one more time uh, for so Netrix Risk Insights, what this is doing is this is a cloud-based web application that allows us to visualize the data that's coming from our Netrix installations that we have out. So that includes the Netrix Auditor as well as the Netrix Data Classification. So this allows us to pay attention to also multiple installs as well, because we this is a multi-tenant. So if you have multiple customer sites or if you're an MSP that's operating with multiple customers, you can kind of visualize the information that's coming from your multiple Netrix sites. Gives you a high level risk breakdown in terms of what's occurring here within your environment, giving you a risk history based on the identity infrastructure and data risk that is contained within. Now, if we look at something like data risk, it's gonna be that sensitive information that might be contained, permissions on specific pieces of stale data, potentially harmful files that might be on a file server. So we give you that high level risk activity as well as give you the ability to drill down and see from what additional uh, instance it, that that report is coming from. So we can see this is an action required. You know, this is contained within, uh, you know, having this out of alignment is going to be a violation of, you know, NIST, GDPR, HIPAA, so, you know, a bunch of different regulatory compliance, and then give you that ability to pay attention to it over time, as well as giving you those specific trending risk factors. So as a demonstration, you, know, you could start out at a very high level risk, but you know, since acquiring Netrix and uh, you know, improving your environment, setting some workflows, um, resolving some possible issues, you might see that trending risk activity going down. So you can you know, start hanging out in the 20s or 30s instead of the 70s or 80s is definitely going to be an improvement within any environment. The Netrix Ris Risk Insights is a cloud solution. Um, the data discovery and classification, as well as the auditor, um, is still on-prem currently. Now, it is a Windows-based application um, that you can deploy into the cloud, say uh, Azure or AWS. 
Um, so that's a, those are a few of our different options and uh, uh, coming soon for the data classification in the cloud, um, you know, something we are actively working on. The uh, risk summary that is contained, I just got a question here, does the risk summary contain uh, the Microsoft Secure Score or Office 365 risks? Uh, yes, the risk insights um, does contain um, specific pieces of information. Say, for example, on identity, we'll be pull pulling from, uh, say, Azure AD or uh, SharePoint um, sites that you might have out here in the environment. So it does pull from different pieces of information that uh, you have um, that does contain also Office 365. Is this all one software with one cost or multiple add-ons? So what you do on the standards kind of, you know, what you're looking for is you look and price based on what specific data sources you are looking like, looking at. So we price based on system. So depending on what specific systems you want to crawl, we do also have some bundles available, um, but that would be best answered uh, by one of our uh, sales representatives. Looks like we have a, still a few more questions possibly coming in here. Thanks, Joe, for throwing in the, that thanks. <laughs> So we got a question from David here. Are most of the classifications out of the box or is there a lot of configuring to get going? So the classifications that I have showed are all out of the box. So out of the box, you get all of these various taxonomies and you can add in additional ones, obviously yourself, but you have a pretty wide range or what I like to call the wide net approach for looking for sensitive information. So again, California Consumer Privacy Act, CMMC, financial records, GLBA, GDPR, HIPAA, PCI, PHI, and PII. Those are all contained uh, within the data, data classification out of the box. And it looks like that's the last of the questions here. Just want to thank everyone uh, for attending. Looks like we're finishing a little bit early, as I like to say. Uh, we'll give you back about a half an hour of your day here. So uh, everyone have a, a great lunch uh, or breakfast or dinner, depending on uh, what time zone you guys are in. But uh, thank everyone for attending and have a great rest of your day.